In this video, we're learning all about aerospace engineering, if it's the right major for you, what the day in the life is like, salary information, all that and more, and we're starting right now. Hey, 1% Nation, I'm Jake Voorhees, and welcome back to the 1% Engineer Show, where we empower young engineers to rise to the top 1% of their career. So if this is you, make sure you hit the notification bell and subscribe. Check out the links below for access to the Discord server with 850 engineers, the free 1% Engineer Kit, which is five eBooks for your success. Links to the Instagram page, help us get to 500 followers. And of course, where you can sign up for a free Thangs account, where you can host a portfolio online. Who wants to be an aerospace engineer? In fact, who is a mechanical engineer who's interested in aerospace engineering I get so many of those questions if that's you comment below what do you need help with what questions do you have what type of video should we make next leave it in the comments we're back to streaming regularly now every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern time go ahead and check out the live stream on YouTube this video features another 1% engineer star, Abir Achi. She's a YouTuber living in Phoenix, Arizona who has her undergraduate and her master's degree in aerospace engineering. She has lots of great videos about her career, what it's like to be an aerospace engineer, how she knew it was for her, what the day in a life is actually like, all of that and more. Go ahead and check out Abir's YouTube channel after this video, guys, for more great content. And without further ado, let's get started with our first question to Abir. What is aerospace engineering? What problems does it solve and what are the branches. Aerospace engineering is an engineering field focused on the design, development, testing, and manufacturing of aerospace systems like aircraft, spacecraft, launch vehicles. This field is mainly focused on problems related to atmospheric and space flight. There are two branches in aerospace engineering, aeronautical engineering and astronautical engineering. Aeronautical engineering is focused on flight within Earth's atmosphere. Astronautical engineering is focused on the design of spacecraft and launch vehicles. So pretty much anything that goes beyond Earth's atmosphere. Thanks, Sabia, for that. I don't think most people think about aerospace engineering in that fashion, that you have half of the industry within orbit and half of the industry outside of orbit. That's the difference between aeronautical engineering and astronautical engineering. Astronautical is out in outer space. Aeronautical is within our atmosphere. There's a huge difference. Elon Musk talks about this all the time, is that in order to maintain orbit, you only need horizontal acceleration that offsets the force of gravity or the acceleration of gravity. But in order to get into outer space and get outside of our atmosphere and outside of that gravitational pull, it takes so much more energy. And it truly is a whole nother classification, a whole nother different world of engineering. So with that being said, what do aerospace engineers do, Abir? Aerospace engineers are mainly focused on designing technologies that can be integrated into aerospace systems. These can be used for transportation, like um, airplanes, helicopters, launch vehicles, or it can be used for communications like satellites, as well as defense applications like missiles. Aerospace engineers can work on the design, development, and manufacturing of aircrafts, uh, spacecrafts, launch vehicles, and defense systems. And for those of you who are thinking aerospace engineering, Abir, how did you know, for example, for you, how did you know that it was the absolute right engineering major for you? Honestly, aerospace engineering is one of the most challenging engineering fields. And it's important to realize that it might not be for everyone. Personally, I decided to pursue aerospace engineering, specifically astronautics, due to my fascination and love for space exploration. In my opinion, it might be a little bit difficult to determine how and is really aerospace engineering for you, but I think uh, there are some questions you, you need to ask yourself. For example, do you like math and physics and are you good at it? Or are you willing to spend the effort and the time that is necessary for you to improve on math and physics to a level that is above average. Math is the language of aerospace engineering. I use principles of math and physics every single day as an aerospace engineer. So it's important to understand that you will be pretty much in every aerospace engineering class. Um, it's kind of not even a thought that you need to know um, principles of math. For example, um, if you're in aerodynamics class, you will be using Calc 3, you will be using differential equations. Um, it's not like the professor will announce that and be like, for this one, we're using this type of equation. They just assume that you know all of that. So it's important to understand that there will be a lot and a lot of math and physics in aerospace engineering. And if you do not enjoy math and physics, then 
aerospace engineering is definitely not for you. Yeah, that's right, Abir. There's a ton of math and engineering, really, no matter what type of engineering you study, particularly for aerospace, all the physics, all the thermodynamics. It is a very complicated branch of engineering. The second important question, in my opinion, is do you like to code? I use a multitude of softwares and coding languages, namely MATLAB, Simulink, and Python. Um, you have to be able, as an aerospace engineer, to learn new coding languages. For example, uh, when I started as an aerospace engineer, I had to learn Perl, which before that I've never really heard of. Um, so it's not necessarily going to be only within college, but after you graduate and you start working as an aerospace engineer, you're going to have to be able to learn coding languages. So if you don't like to code, then aerospace engineering is not gonna be for you. Thanks for adding that, Abir. Maybe not aerospace engineering is for everyone out there, which is why I talk so much about choosing one of the big three, electrical, civil, or mechanical engineering. And therefore, for the mechanical engineers who are interested in aerospace engineering, you can study mechanical and then go into aerospace, but Abir didn't do this. Sometimes people really know what they wanna do. Abir, it's great to know that you are one of those people who you had a passion for it going into your undergrad, and then you continue to study aerospace engineering even into your master's degree. She was 100% confident about that field. So for you guys wondering mechanical versus aerospace, you have to assess how confident are you? What are your instincts? If you want to go more abroad, that's totally fine. If you want to isolate and you really know it's for you, go for it. Do you like working with ideas that require an immense amount of thinking and innovation? As aerospace engineers, we are faced with new problems every day. So developing a solid problem solving skills are extremely important in, in this field. Um, of course, there are other questions uh, and, and points that you need to focus on when deciding whether aerospace engineering is for you, but these are just kind of the generalized questions that I think are important to ask yourself when you're trying to decide whether or not you want to pursue aerospace engineering. Okay, thanks for that. Now let's talk salary stuff. So many people want to know how much do aerospace engineers make? Can aerospace engineering make me rich? Aerospace engineering salaries vary depending on whether you're in aeronautics or in astronautics. Um, do you work for a government agency like NASA or do you work for a private company like Lockheed Martin in North of Grumman? Uh, what state you live in due to the varying um, standards of living uh, from state to state here in America? So yeah, that's a really good point about where you live. There are some aerospace engineering employment clusters that have an incredibly low cost of living and some that are really high. So you have the full spectrum. And this is one variable that truly impacts the take home income is where do you actually live? Sometimes a construction engineer can be out in the middle of nowhere and the cost of living is really low. And sometimes a stereotypical white collar corporate engineering individual ends up living somewhere in downtown New York or downtown San Francisco where it's incredibly expensive, your cost of living. So even though you're making a lot more in your salary and your benefits, potentially your actual quality of life is impacted much more severely. For example, Kansas, Texas, and Georgia will be far more cost effective than LA or New York. But the median pay, according to um, the Department of Labor in the United States for aerospace engineers is about $116,000. Of course, this varies between engineers. Um, if someone has been in the field for 15 years, of course, they're going to be making much more money than someone who just came out of college. So that's something that's important to keep in mind. But I did make a video recently on my channel about how much aerospace engineers make. So if you want to see a more detailed version, uh, I recommend you watch that video. In this video here, Abir elaborates more about aerospace engineering salary information, showing that aerospace engineering actually outpaces most other engineering. So check out that video, guys. Okay, Abir, thanks for the salary information. Now let's get on to the day in the life of an aerospace engineering question. What is it like to actually be you in your career? I work as a satellite guidance navigation and control engineer, otherwise known as a GNC engineer. A satellite guidance and navigation control engineering is a uh, focus or specialty in astronautics that deals with the control uh, and movement of spacecraft in space or in orbit around a planet. My day consists of designing and testing of the attitude control subsystem of the satellite and running computer simulations to determine how the control and flight sy systems uh, react under certain conditions. Great, thanks for that. Do you have any specific examples, anything else you want to add to a day in a life, what it's like to be an aerospace engineer? Uh, some simple examples of some things that GNC engineers deal with are, for example, how much momentum is needed to point a certain instrument on a satellite towards nadir, or how much momentum is needed to point a solar array towards the sun. 
how do we determine the quaternions? Or how to uh, dump the accumulated momentum using reaction wheels and other actuators on the satellite. The end. Awesome, thanks for that information, Abir, and thanks for all the answers to these questions. I really appreciate it. And so does 1% Nation. If you guys want to learn more about aerospace engineering, again, go ahead and check out Abir's YouTube channel. She's active on Instagram as well, and you can connect with her on LinkedIn. Hey, 1% Nation. Hope you enjoyed that interview between myself and Abir Achi. If you did, and you're a young engineer who wants to rise to the top 1% of your career, then make sure you hit the bell and subscribe because we release videos every week for your engineering success. Comment below on what type of videos we should make next. Make sure you check out the links in the description for access to the Discord channel with almost 1,000 engineers. Sign up for a free thanks account. Check out our Instagram page and sign up for the 1% engineer kit below. We stream every single Thursday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time, so make sure you check that out. Ask questions in the Discord and you can have something featured on the live stream. Thanks again, 1% Nation, and we'll see you again in another video. Bye-bye.